Coming up on State of Events, the US government's latest move to stop the banking crisis, which may have rippling effect across the globe. And a new development site set to begin construction on SF State's campus. State of Events starts now. Good afternoon and welcome to State of Events. I'm Prerna Chandelier. And I'm Brielle Braswell. Federal regulators have turned to emergency measures to safeguard depositors after the failure of California-based Silicon Valley Bank and took control of New York-based Signature Bank. With the looming fear that banking crisis might spread, the Treasury Department, Federal Reserves and FDCI guarantees all SVB clients that they will be able to access their money soon. Fed regulators said, and I quote, this step will ensure that the U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital role of protecting deposits and providing access to credit to households and businesses in a manner that promotes strong and sustainable economic growth." Unquote. San Francisco State University is turning one of their campuses' soccer fields into brand new buildings for future students. Reporter Sofia Vialba has more. Yes, Brielle, the university is turning one of its vibrant green fields into new buildings. Here's a look at what future students can expect. Students at San Francisco State might have recently noticed the soccer fields on West Campus Green are fenced off to the public. That's because construction is set to begin on a new housing building for freshmen. The new residence hall is expected to house 750 first-year students in its six-story building. Some current students say this is good news for the university. Housing here has been a really big issue, especially with like the rising and increase of applications and everything. Um, I lived in Manzanita and there was no room for like new people to move in, so I think it's a really good investment for the school and overall it's going to be really good in the future. San Francisco State has secured over $116 million from the California State budget to cover 65% of the total cost of development for the new project. Now the remaining 35% is being covered by the university's bond program. The current Student Health Services building will be relocated to the development site in a new Gator Health Center building. A new dining center is also set to be built on the site. Both are scheduled to be open in winter of 2024. Despite these new additions, some students say it's a waste of money. I know right now that the acceptance rate here at SF State is at 98%, which is really high. Um, when I first um, applied to SF State, it was at 70%, and I think we should bring that down, and that would help with not having to have so much housing for students. Back in October, when SF State announced its plans for the West Campus Green Development Site, State Assemblymember Phil Ting from San Francisco attended and said how important residence halls are for a student's success in their education during college, noting most California college campuses lack sufficient housing for students. This comes at a time when state universities are trying to get more applicants in their pool while being in one of the country's most expensive cities for housing and living costs. Reporting in San Francisco, Sophia Vialba, State of Events. Great to see some new additions coming. Sophia, you mentioned when the dining hall and health center are set to be completed. When can we expect the new housing to be completed as well? Yeah, so San Francisco State expects the new freshman housing building to be completed by the fall of 2024. Now, this is the second building currently under construction at SF State, joining the construction of the new science and engineering building on campus. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Brielle. SF State holds its first ever She Lead events where hundreds of students, faculty and staff gathered for the Day of Community and Education. She Leads is a women-focused event inclusive of trans women, non-binary and gender non-conforming people. The three-hour event consists of two sections, first a 90-minute leadership panel discussion and a 60-minute professional success workshop which organizers plan to make an annual occasion. Coming up after the break, find out more about the extreme weather conditions coming to California. And later in the show, learn how your unique interests can help you get involved on campus. So stick around. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration.
Welcome back to State of Events. Another week of extreme weather is expected, this time impacting the country coast to coast. The Northeast is preparing for a late winter storm that could bring significant snow. Meanwhile, residents here in storm battered California are experiencing yet another atmospheric river event. Many areas are still flooded from heavy rains last week, and a breach in Cal Critical Levee has officials working fast to plug the hole. Mike Valerio is in Parajo, California, has the latest. Crews in Pajaro, California are racing against the clock to place a temporary fix on a compromised part of a critical levee ahead of the 11th atmospheric river to hit the west this winter. It's expected to bring more intense, sustained flooding in the days ahead. This is such a great hardship on this community, but we know that we will get through, through this. The levee breach sending this rushing river into homes, farms, and trapping families in the small community of Pajaro. We really didn't expect it to happen. Um, but here we are now. More than 17 million people remain under flood watches across California and Nevada. We are dealing with rain and wind events that I can only describe as a super soaker saturation event. Across the country, a late winter nor'easter is threatening heavy snowfall and strong winds across New York and New England and raising concerns of coastal flooding, according to the National Weather Service, which will likely mean power outages. We're ready for the storm. We've talked to our customers. You know, customer and our employee safety is certainly our priority. In Pajaro, California, I'm Mike Valerio. Here in the Bay Area, the National Weather Service has issued a high wind warning through Wednesday night. Meteorologists say these winds have the potential to blow down trees, damage power lines, and cause power outages. That's exactly what happened over the weekend. Campus housing authorities say some residents experienced a power outage early Saturday morning. Most residents say the power was restored just before noon. On Monday, SFSU housing officials sent out an email asking students, staff, and residents to stay away from trees and try to stay indoors, if possible. While this storm passes through the area, it's also recommended that you stay clear of windows and keep them close to help avoid injury. University officials are also reminding people be prepared for more possible powder outages and suggest everyone be sure to have food, water, and first aid kit on hand, along with a flashlight and extra batteries. If you're interested in becoming a professor or are passionate about a certain topic, the Experimental College is looking for teachers for the 2023 fall semester. EXCO began in fall of 1965 with three students-led course. It's a place for SFSU students to demonstrate their leadership skills and share their voices. The application opened on March 1st and closes on 31st of this month. In order to apply, you must be an undergrad student and submit a class proposal. By the deadline, currently a few of the classes are being offered in our intro to veterinary medicine and lucid dreaming, if you are interested in learning more about the EXCO visit, their office in the HSS building in room number 381. Coming up after the break, the famous Bay Bridge lights turned on Sunday on accident. And another cheat day coming up, so stick around. can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. Third line, please. D E P R E S S I O N. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Hmm. <laughs> Sorting out a mental health concern is not something to attempt on your own. Hmm. Anxiety. 
I thought so. Like many health conditions, help for mental illness takes professional diagnosis and treatment. And the sooner you seek treatment, the better. Look at that. 6,000 steps and PTSD. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. Find out what to do. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. Welcome back to State of Events. The Bay Bridge lights are back on. The famous lights turned on this Sunday on accident. It seems that the lights are performing so poorly that even the off switch is not working. According to the founder of Illuminate, Ben Davis, the lights were originally turned off on March 5th because of technical issues. Since 2013, the lights on the bridge have turned on every night. Davis hopes to raise $11 million to renovate the Bay Bridge lights. They are currently working on turning the lights back off. Now, Tuesday is the 14th day of the third month that we celebrate Pi. ...is in the first few digits of Pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference. It just goes on and on without stopping or repeating, at least as far... Well, don't do the, you know, approach at once. Sure. <laughs> ...on March 14th. That's 314 is in the first few digits of pi. The ratio of a circle's circumference. It just goes on and on without stopping or repeating. At least as far as... Don't the, you know, approach at Sure. <laughs> so, Brielle, which is your favorite pie? If I had to choose, I'd probably say it's either pumpkin or apple. Do you have a favorite pie? I'm not really a pie person, but if I had to choose, I think I'll go for pumpkin pie. It's a good choice. That's all we have for you this time. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget to subscribe to our State of Events channel on YouTube. For State of Events, this is Prina Shandilya. And I'm Brielle Roswell. Have a great day.